meet, to experience, and to experience a victorious Christian life. You know, some people just live a Christian life, but you are there for a victorious Christian life. And I'm excited that you prepare people for the second coming of Jesus. May this war room bring change in our lives as you will be deliberating to us this morning. May God bless you with your family. There it is. It's your time, Pastor. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Kunene. Uh, thank you for the introduction and once again for the last time uh, in the series of this week. I'm so much excited to meet with you uh, this morning, all of you who have joined in. We thank God that we've woken up. It's by the grace of God. It's not the alarm <clears throat> that woke up, uh, that, that woke us up this morning. Come on, I'm seeing already. Good morning, Moruti. Good morning, Fondisi. Come on, let them, let them come. Let them come. Come on, I'm receiving them. Good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. I'm so much excited. One more time to connect with you uh, during this 5 a.m. prayer meeting. Good. So do it, do it, do it. Come on, do it. We, we began on Sunday. It's almost a week. And uh, the, the, the theme has been War Room as a theme that we've been running on. And uh, we say, it according to the dictionary, then war room is a room in a building or a military headquarters where activities are directed, where decisions are crafted and drafted, and uh, where strategies are planned. So we've been meeting here to, to plan. We've been meeting here to strategize. And on Sunday, we say, don't waste your punches. And on, on Monday, we, we say, starve the dog. And on Tuesday, we said, you, you've got to fight back. You've got to fight back. And on Wednesday, we said, you have to rewrite your story. And on Thursday, we said, don't give up because help, help is on the way. And uh, yesterday we looked at the power of two, that God wants us to always you know, be paired. This, this morning, I want us to look at spiritual boot camp, spiritual boot camp. May we pray. Eternal Father and God in heaven, we worship you this morning. We glorify your name. We invite you, God, as we hold this session once again this morning, that you may speak to us, Lord, and touch our lives, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, look, good, 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 good. Nice. Let's, let's, let's get to work. 15, 15 years ago, I was set to join the army. The plan said, me, man. But, but you know, God has his own plans. He intercepted me, okay? He, he, he changed the plans. My heart was beating for the army. Today I would be a soldier, but uh, I find myself lifting up the blood-stained blood banner of Jesus Christ because God, God knows why my, my plans failed. He facilitated the, the flopping of my plans. I, I would be in the barracks now, maybe. But, but one thing I know is that after you have been recruited and you have been selected into, uh, to join the army, then you are taken to a boot camp. You are taken to a boot camp. And, and it's, it's, it's my understanding that when you get to a boot camp, and I know that you have a lot of them in your countries. Back in my country, I know a number of them. You have been recruited, you've been selected, then you go straight to the boot camp. And, and, and what, what, really, what really happens in a boot camp? You go through intense training. You are trained. You are taught endurance you 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 are hardened 
and you are made ready to serve in a battlefield. And, and again, your, 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 your pride is, is, is broken and you are reduced to submission and, and, and your self-will is, is stripped away. And uh, it's a time of where, where you learn discipline, you learn to obey commands and orders. And, and you, you've got to do an ending work so that by the time you come out, you are not the same person that, that, that got in. Why, why, why is it necessary to take recruits uh, through a boot camp? Because you see, when, when we join, when we join, we are coming from diverse backgrounds. When, when we join the military, we, we, we have different pedigrees, different cultures, different upbringings from our home. Some of us are lazy. Some of us are a little bit rebellious. Some of us, we carry some, uh, let me say, bad manners and, uh, that, that may not really work well if you are to operate in, in a group. And that's why the military is Christian. It's referred to as a disciplined force. So, so, so the, 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 the major, the, the denominator is that everybody who joins the military then has to be trained to be so much disciplined and they must learn how to endure. So, so the, 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 the new recruits who joined the military then need some molding because of the factors that I just mentioned that we come from different places, different situations, but, but we have to be trained, we have to be tutored, we have to be made into one unit. So there's, there's a lot of molding, there's a lot of shaping, and there's a lot of breaking. And by the time that you graduate, by the time we have the pass out parade, there's tremendous change from the person who got in and the person who is now graduating. A lot of change, significant changes. Uh, you, you look at yourself in the mirror and, and you can see a totally new person altogether. You, you have learned to obey orders without even questioning. Yet then before you would want to question everything, you want to say, why do you want me to do this? But, but, but by the time you are graduating from the boot camp, then, then you've learned no, 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 not to question. You want to do it first, then maybe you can question later. You, you have lost your rebellious nature. <laughs> and, and you can now work as a unit. Have you ever seen a uh, military group, soldiers marching and doing their thing? They do it like they are just like one unit. They have learned to follow the leader even unto death, if necessary. Why? Because they've been through a train, they've been through a process, they've been through a transformation, they've been through changes that have altered their worldview, altered their life completely in a very significant uh, manner. So, so the soldier is transformed. When he comes out, he's transformed from, from a common man, from a civilian into a battle-ready soldier. Different altogether. The, the guy who got in maybe was a little bit of coward, but now by the time they are coming out, they are really ready to face the issues, the, the battlefield, the soldier learns no, a lot in a very short time, like, like nine months maybe, or less than a year. And by the time they, they, they come out, they are totally different. Everything he learns in a, in a boot camp is very essential. And it has helped them to be the kind of people that they are. Let, 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 let me transition this and say, when we accept Jesus Christ, then we ideally should go through a spiritual boot camp, okay? When we accept Jesus Christ, when we say yes to Jesus Christ, then ideally we should go through a process of transformation, a process of breaking us, a, a, a process of bringing us to total surrender and total submission. Every one of you who wants to be used by the Lord, every one of you who wants to serve Jesus, everyone who wants to be, uh, to, to contribute to the cause of the kingdom of God, then, then you've, you've got through, you've got to go through a process. You've got to pass through God's training ground because you see, listen to me, because, because we need to be broken. 
to be blessed. And we, we need to be broken to be used. And, 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 and the breaking of who I am, the breaking of my self-dependence, the, 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 the breaking of the, the rebellious nature in me, sometimes it's not easy. It has to be through a process. Yes, when I accept Jesus Christ and I say yes to Jesus, it's, it's an instant process. I am accepted and I become a child of God. And that's what uh, John chapter 1 verse 12 says. Those who accepted and believed in him, he gave them the power to become the children of God. So I say yes. But, but, but then a process, that's where God takes me through step by step of breaking me, molding me, and shaping me until I get to a point of being obedient even unto death. I'm saying, Jesus Christ, I'm willing to do what you want me to do. So I, I have been broken. I have been broken. What, what, does, what does broken mean? It, it, it means to be reduced to the point of humbly realizing and accepting that without Jesus Christ, we are nothing. It, it, means, it means I've been brought to a point of total submission and surrender. And our prayer this morning, ladies and gentlemen, listening to me, our prayer this morning to all of you and including myself, who are tuned in and they are listening to this, our prayer should be, Lord, break me. Lord, break me. Break me, Jesus. Lord, Lord, break me. I want you to take me through a process. I want you to transform me. I want you to change me. Lord Jesus, just, just break me, Jesus. Just, just break me. Take me through your boot camp. Change me, transform me. And I, I, I wish you would also go to the chat section and say, Lord, break me. That should be our prayer this morning. And say, come on, I'm seeing someone is already dropping in. Lord, that should be our prayer. Lord, break me. But, but, but if you are not ready for it, please don't, don't type it. Don't type it. It's, it's a dangerous prayer that you, that you are making. It's a dangerous prayer. You see, it's, it's easy to pray, Lord, bless me. It's easy to pray, Lord, fix me. It's easy to pray, Lord, guide me. It's easy to pray, Lord, make me. It's easy to pray, Lord, be with me. Those, those are easy prayers. These, these are prayers for every Christian. But Lord, break me is not an easy prayer. Come on. It, it's not your daily prayer. <laughs> Come on. It's, it's, it's not your daily prayer. It's not, it's not your daily thing. Because it takes tremendous faith to pray this prayer. You are willing to tell God, break me. And it requires, listen to me, listen to me. It requires divine boldness you're saying god break me it's, it's a dangerous prayer and god answers it god answers it because that is what god wants for us to be broken to get to a point of submission and surrender to him so so before you type in please be, be sure that this is a prayer that god really answers you you've got to really mean it you're saying god i need you to break me god take me through your spiritual boot camp it, it's a prayer that god answers because it it, it, it gets us at the very heart of, of, of at the very point, at the very position where he wants from us, that is total devotion. That's what God wants you. Total devotion and commitment. Come on, listen to me, listen to me. God, God, God wants to, to, to dethrone yourself because sometimes we, 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 we yield, we, we give ourselves to Jesus Christ, but self is still seated at the throne and at the castle of our hearts, self, it's still about me. But, 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 but God would want to sit at that you know, sanctum, at, at that position, and, and be the one who calls the shots, the one who controls, the one who decides, the one who commands, the, the one who guides. And so how do we get out of, 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 of the throne, sitting at the throne of our lives? It, it's until when we allow God to break us and he, 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 sits, he sits at his you know, rightful place where he controls things in our lives. So, so Lord, break me. It's also like saying, Lord, disrupt me. Lord, disrupt my plan. Lord, it, it, it's like you're saying, Lord, I need some divine interruption in my life. It, it means... You're willing that God can reorganize and let me say disorganize your life again. You're saying, God, if it means saving me, 
destroy my plants. Mm. God, 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 if it, if it will be painful, let it be, but I, I want to be saved. God, 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 break me. God, walk in me. God, if it, if it will be hurting, if it will be painful, painful I, I'm willing to go through this. And you see, he, he uses all kinds of, of methods to achieve this. He, he can break us by allowing a sickness or a disease, a crisis. Sometimes it could, it could even be a loss of a job. It could be death. It could be financial losses. For others, the Lord allows daily trials, difficulties. He allows you to meet difficult people, maybe a difficult boss, maybe a difficult wife. Maybe a difficult husband, maybe difficult children, maybe difficult parents. You, you meet with difficult people. You, you meet with hard circumstances. Sometimes you face physical problems to bring us to the place of brokenness. That's why I said, come on, before you pray this prayer, be very careful. Be very careful. This is a dangerous prayer that we are praying this morning. On, on the way to Damascus, God intercepted and broke Saul and made him whole. God, God gave Apostle Paul a, a physical illness that he had to handle, he had to deal with, he had to bear, he had to carry, that made him physically weak. Yes, 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 he, he became physically weak, but it also made him spiritually strong. Okay, okay, so, so this guy is physically weak, but 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 he's physically strong. But, but you know, it, it, was, it was to bring him to a point of surrender. First, he made him blind in, in Acts chapter 9, made him blind. And then the Bible says there was a thorn in his flesh that he had to contend with, he had to deal with always. But, but this brought Paul to a point of surrender. And, and Paul said, Lord, here I am, 100% yours cleanse me and send me. And no wonder Paul was able to accomplish much for the cause of God, because he was willing. God broke him. God brought him to a point of submission. If, 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 you, if you may, please, you may read with me the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to verse number 10, Corinthians chapter 12. He says, unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of certain to perfect me, lest I be exalted. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times. He says, I pleaded to God, please take this thorn away three times that it might depart from me. What did God say? And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, mostly, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities. I'll boast in my pain that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Okay, <laughs> get that, get that, get that, come on, get that, get that with me. I will rest in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I need the power of Christ to rest upon me. But listen to verse number 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, he says, then I am strong. Oh my goodness. God brought him to a point of submission. And he says, okay, these infirmities, they, they, they give me power. They give me power. God broke me. I am not what I used to be physically because God, 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 God wrestled with me. God brought me to a point of subjection. He, he broke me down. And he says, now, I, I, though I am weak, then, then I am strong. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring some bad news to you. I'm, I'm going to bring some bad news to you. Paul says, I prayed three times for this thing to be taken away. But it was not taken away. Let me, let me bring some bad news, or maybe good news, depending on how you want to look at it. Not every prayer is answered. And I want to, to thank uh, the person who prayed that God, you've answered the way we wanted or the way you wanted, but the prayers have been answered. Paul prayed three times. God 
remove this stone? The answer was no. God remove this stone. The answer was no. God remove this stone. The answer was no. We will live with some conditions in our lives. We will pray, but the same conditions will remain. That's, 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 that's not good news. That's not good news. We, there are some conditions that we will live with in this life. <clears throat> and that's why we normally pray, God, let your will be done. Because we, we don't know. In, in our limited understanding, then we would want this to happen this way. But, but God who has you know, you know, deeper you know, and, and is not limited, he's able to see what is good and what is best for us. He says, no, you, you have to live with this because there's, there's some purpose, there's some objective why you are in this situation. And so God said to Paul, you are better with a thorn. You are better with a thorn. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Could there be something that you've been struggling with and maybe God has said you are better with this? Because you pray more now than you ever did before. Okay? Because you come before me more than you ever did before. Okay? Because you, you now trust me more. Because you now seek me more because of that limb that is not going, because of that thorn. Because you, 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 you now rely on me, because you, you now depend on me, because you, you now want me, you now need me. You decide to connect with me. I, I, I normally tell God, please, if there are some things that you know will keep me connected to you in my life, please let them be. Because sometimes when, when we feel okay and we, we get to a point that, okay, I can do life, then we, we, we start loosening and we start disconnecting from God. God broke Paul. And our prayer this morning should be, Lord, break me. It's, 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 it's the prayer. It's, it's the prayer for those who are tired with mediocrity and shallowness in your Christian life. You're tired and you're saying, mm -mm, I, I don't want things to be like this again. I, I, I want a deeper intimacy with Jesus Christ. I'm tired with just being on the surface. Is it painful? Yes, it's painful. Is it necessary? Yes, yes, yes. Is it what? Yes. Is it what God wants from us? Yes, God wants us to be broken. He wants to break you of your pride. He wants to break you of your self-reliance. He wants to maybe lose that job sometimes. Maybe lose your health sometimes. And it helps you to, to reroot. It, it helps you to, to look at things from a different perspective. It helps you to get back to, 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 the, to your default settings, to, to the drawing board. And, 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 and it helps you to reorganize your priorities once again. And, and you know that God belongs here. Because on the highway of life, sometimes we lose it. Sometimes we lose it as we trudge the... The, 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 the upward way and sometimes as we go through life in this fast paced life we, 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 we find ourselves disorganizing our priorities and, and, and we find ourselves losing the things that have made us to be who we are today you know, that the principles, the tenets that we grew with even from our families we lose them as, as, as we go on, on, on the highway of this life and, and so sometimes God, God allows us to to, to get back again and, and refocus, refocus and, and try to find our bearing and our, and our spiritual compass. So, so he, he wants to bless us. He wants to break us from our self-sufficiency, from our selfishness, so that he can, we, we can be Christ-centered. He wants to break us from our idolatry and, and, our, and our worldly ways. Why does he want to break us? He wants to break us so that he can bless and use us in different ways. I remember God broke the king Nebuchadnezzar in, in the book of Daniel chapter 4, verse 34. After he took him to the wild for seven years, the, the guy comes back and he says, glory to God. No one is to be worshipped than God. God, God. God humbled him. God broke him down. And I always believe that we shall meet him in heaven someday because his life changed. It's my prayer that God can bring us to the point of submission. It's my prayer that God can bring us to the point of saying, God, 
let your will be done. I talked about Jacob this week as I'm, I'm saying my time is gone. I talked about Jacob being a con man, conniving, cunning, a trickster, a supplanter, and a crooked fella. And after many years of being away from home, the guy decides to go back home. He had duped his father. He had conned his brother, manipulated everyone that he ever met until when Jesus met him in Genesis chapter 32. And they wrestled whole night. They wrestled the whole night because sometimes when we've been through deep things of this life, it's not easy to get them out. So God has to really wrestle and fight us properly because he wants to break us. And by morning, he touched the hip uh, and this guy said, no, no, this is not a usual touch. I've been touched by many people, but this one is not, no, 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 this is not usual. Uh -uh. God crushed this man. He, he broke him. And by the way, if you read this story, you will discover that he had a limp that would not go. He limped the rest of his life. For the rest of his life, Jacob limped. He told, no, no, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Bless me first before you go. So, so God has to break you before he blesses you. Come on, God has to, to, to break you. And he says, what's your name? I, he says, my name is Jacob. From now, your name is not going to be Jacob because you have fought with God and, 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 and you, you, you're not easy. You're not easy. So I'm going to change your name and I will, go in, I will change you and bless you. I will, I, will, I will bless you and I will change your name. So he broke him. He bridled him and then he blessed him. God had to break him in order to bless him. God cannot use somebody who is filled with themselves. God has to break you so that he can bridle you, tie you closer to him, and so that he can bless you. I mean, it's, it's my prayer that God will break us this morning. Okay, this November. Okay, this year. Okay, at, at this right time, God can bless us. And uh, we, if it has to be that we have to limp, let it be but we are in line with the will of God. In Genesis 32 verse 30, he says, I have seen the face of God. God changed his name and he saw the face of God. May, 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 may you see the face of God. May you be blessed. May your name change. May you be favored. May you be a victor. May you be an overcomer. May you be able. May you be a winner over all the things that you deal with, but in line with the will of God. I want to pray. My time is over. I want to pray. Come on, you're saying, Lord, break me. You want to say it again? You want to say it again? You want to say, Lord, break me again? I know you had said this before as we started. Maybe you want to say it again. But Lord, if it has to be, just break me, Lord. I want to fully belong to you. I want to be used by you. I'm tired with mediocrity. I want to take this thing to another level. Wait, it's, it's so deep. Lord, just, just break me. Take me to, through your boot camp. God, transform me. God, change me. God, I want to be totally sold out to you. I want to belong to you without any reservation. Break me, Lord. If it has to be painful, let it be. If it, has, if it is for my salvation, let it be. Break me, Lord. Break me. That's your prayer this morning. You're saying, break me, Jesus. Break me. I need you to touch me. Touch my legs. Touch my hips. Touch, 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 touch all parts of my body and break me, Lord. Physically, if it has to be. And spiritually, God, I want my heart to belong to you. I want to pray with you, my friend. I want to pray. Let's pray. Eternal Father and God in heaven, we thank you this morning. God, we have a very dangerous prayer we are praying this morning, but a very important one because it, it takes us to another level, deeper and higher still. God, you've seen your children expressing the desire to be broken. God, break us in your own ways. Because we, we, we wake up every morning. We don't want it to be in vain. We wanted God to amount to something. And that something is establishing a strong relationship with you. God, do anything that will please you to us and on us and through us. We are willing, God. We want to yield to you. We want to surrender to you. May your will be done now and forevermore, for I have prayed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.